What's up mobile devs? Today we are going to build from scratch, as usual, the simple and powerful animation in React Native, using mainly the React Native gesture handler package and the reanimated package. So in this video we are going to introduce a new series called What About Gestures. The aim is to take an in-depth look at the React Native animations closely related to gestures. So obviously the Animate with Reanimated series will not be interrupted and will continue to bring content related to animations. So uh, let me tell you that uh, this animation is heavily inspired by the chat heads example already uploaded in the React Native Gesture Handler repository. So if you want to learn more about that, check the link in the video description. That said, we can finally move on the code part. So here I've created a React Native project with the latest version of the Expo SDK. So um, here you can see that I'm using the version 44 of the Expo SDK. Uh, of course, uh, I've just uh, installed, uh, upgraded the Expo SDK on my computer and I've initialized the project from scratch with the TypeScript configuration. I've also installed the React Native Gesture Handler package. We will need a version above the 2.0. And of course, we are going to use the reanimated package with a version above the 2.0 version. So uh, in order to complete the reanimated uh, installation, uh, don't forget to add the reanimated plugin in the bubble config.js. So that said, we can start to display our circle on the middle of the screen. So let's say here styles.circle. And let's specify here the circle style. So we are going to use a height equal to 80, a width equal to 80. So we can also say aspect ratio equal to 1. And background color equal to, uh, let's say, blue. So uh, since we want a circle, let's specify here the border radius equal to 40. And for design purposes, let's update the opacity equal to 0 0.8. So um, at this point, we can already start to see how the new version of uh, Gesture Handler works. So normally, uh, if we want to uh, translate this circle on the screen, we use the pan gesture handler component from React Native Gesture Handler. But with the version, with the version 2.0, with the, so of course also with a version above the 2.0 version, we can use just a gesture detector. So the difference is that instead of using a pan gesture handler, a pin gesture handler, and so on and so forth, we can just use and define every gesture with the gesture detector component. So, uh, of course, we are going to animate this view. Let's specify, therefore, an animated view. Uh, we are going to use animated from reanimated. And in order to translate this circle, we need to specify here the gesture property. So, in order to specify the gesture property, we need to define the gesture right here. So, the default approach before the version 2.0 of React Native Gesture Handler was to use the hook use animated uh, use animated gesture handler from react native reanimated so this one and here uh, we can define the different callbacks uh, that we want to handle so instead of instead of this approach we can use now the gesture component from the react native gesture handler we can specify that we want a pan gesture and we can specify here all the different callbacks. So, uh, for instance, uh, if we want to handle the uh, translation, uh, the default translation, the uh, unactive uh, callback, we can use the onUpdate method. So here, let's uh, access the event and let's print the event translation X. So, uh, of course, we need to assign this property to the gesture detector and let's reload. So here you can see uh, what is happening. You can see the uh, values, the translation X values. So uh, in order to update uh, this, uh, this circle, we need to save uh, this translation X value and we need to pass uh, the translation X with a reanimated style to this animated view. So basically there are, uh, so let's say 
minus different uh, uh, minus difference between uh, the two versions of uh, React Native Gesture Handler. But what you need to keep in mind is that uh, right now we are handling the on update callback uh, with the Gesture Handler and not with the unhook provided by Reanimated. So this is a huge difference uh, between uh, uh, the previous approach, but uh, uh, from the syntax, uh, we can see that uh, almost nothing is changing. So here, let's uh, specify that we want to, to access the uh, shared value, the translate x shared value, and we are going to save the translation x inside this shared value. And let's pass uh, so let's pass this uh, translate x value inside an animated, uh, a reanimated style. So here, let's return transform and let's say translate x, translate x dot value. So uh, if you are not familiar with this kind of syntax, uh, uh, so use shared value and uh, use animated style, you can check out uh, my um, playlist uh, related to animated, to reanimated. I will put the link in the video description, of course. So here, let's assign this reanimated style to this animated view. And let's see what is happening. So we can see that everything is working nicely. But if I start again this animation, you can see this glitch. So basically, the previous value of the TranslateX uh, uh, shared value isn't stored anywhere. And therefore, the animation isn't keeping the previous state, but it always restarts from the beginning. So we are going to fix this uh, issue in a second, but uh, for now, let's uh, also handle the translate y. So let's uh, create here the translate y shared value. And uh, let's save the event.translation y right here. Let's add inside this reanimated style also the translate y value. So let's reload. We can see that we are handling the translate y uh, axis, so the vertical axis. And if we restart, we have the same problem that we had before. And in order to fix it, usually we need to store the, pre the current state in, um, inside a context object. In the previous version of uh, a gesture handler, uh, we uh, deal this kind of uh, issue with the, uh, the context object provided by each different callback. So here, normally, uh, we would have access to this uh, context object. But uh, in the latest version, we need to handle ourselves this context object as a shared value. So let's define here our context object. And let's define here the initial state. So uh, inside our context, we are going to save uh, two different values, uh, an X value and a Y value. And we are going to save the previous position on the start callback. So here, that's the syntax. We are going to handle here the context. So let's, let's say that we want to store inside this context the uh, current position. So let's say x equal to translate x value and y equal to translate y value. And let's keep here, let's access here the context.value.x and this context.value.y. So let's reload. And you can see that everything is working perfectly. So um, we are able to scroll everywhere this kind of circle, but it isn't the animation that we want. So uh, we don't want that uh, this circle follows perfectly our, uh, our finger, but we want that it follows with the spring animation. And in order to do it, uh, let's define here the so let's uh, derive the follow x position. So this follow x position will be our circle x position. We are going to derive the circle x position from the translate x value. And we are going to derive the follow y position from this uh, translate y value. So let's specify here follow x and follow y. So of course, uh, uh, here nothing is changing. We are just uh, uh, refactoring a little bit this code. So uh, you can see that uh, we are using, of course, use the right value from reanimated. 
but uh, since we want to follow it with a spring animation, let's specify here the with spring high order function from a reanimated. So with spring, and let's see what's going on. So you can see this beautiful effect right here. So um, at this point, uh, what we are going to do? We are going to create the red circle and the red circle will not follow this translate x value, but it will follow this follow x value and the follow y value. So basically the red circle will follow this uh, blue circle. So we are going to replicate over and over this logic right here. But uh, in order to avoid uh, a lot of replication, let's just create a custom hook. Basically, we are going to create uh, an, a custom hook use, uh, called use follow animated position. So here we are going to access uh, the uh, position that we want to follow. So let's say animated position. Of course, we need to create uh, this animated position type. So let's say um, this animated position will have an X and a Y shared value. So we are going to follow, for instance, the translate X value and the translate Y value. So let's say animated shared value and Y will be an animated shared value of type number. And here we can access the X and the Y. So we are just going to copy all this logic and let's paste right here. So instead of a translate X value, we are going to follow the X and the Y value. So let's, uh, so from this hook, we are going to return the follow X, the follow Y and the reanimated style. So let's uh, uh, remove this logic and let's just say, uh, use follow animated position. X will be equal to translate X and Y will be equal to translate Y. And we are going to access follow X, follow Y and reanimated style. So uh, basically here we, um, we have just refactored a little bit the code, nothing is changing. Um, it's just for uh, the sake of uh, clarity. So uh, right now we are going to replicate this logic. So wrapping it inside a custom hook, it's much more readable. So um, at this point, let's create uh, this red circle. So here, let's get rid of the, this reanimated style and let's specify background color equal to red. So let's reload. So uh, let's also add here the position absolute to this circle. And we can see that nothing is working. We need uh, to tell to the red circle to follow the blue circle. And in order to do that, let's reuse this custom hook. And let's define, uh, so let's, uh, let's call it here, uh, reanimated blue circle style. Let's call it uh, follow X will be our blue follow X. Follow Y will be blue follow Y. And we are going to follow not the translate X, but we are going to follow the blue follow X and the blue follow Y. So uh, here it will be reanimated style. It will be called reanimated red circle style. So I hope that it is clear. Basically, we are just following from this blue. Uh, so we are just telling to the red circle to follow the blue, uh, the blue circle. And uh, we are just uh, uh, updating here the, the name for uh, the clarity. So let's call it reanimated blue circle style here. And here, let's say reanimated red circle style. So I know that uh, this explanation is a little bit messy, but uh, it is a little bit hard to uh, explain it in a, a simple way. But uh, the concept is really simple. We are just telling to each circle to follow the previous circle. So you can see here that everything is working perfectly. So um, the last circle that we want to animate is the green circle. And at this point, it should be almost uh, uh, easy to understand how to do it. We are just going to replicate this custom hook. This one will be called, uh, uh, let's say, red follow X, red follow Y. 
and this one is going to be called uh, uh, reanimated. Uh, re no, this one was uh, was actually right. So here we are going to follow from the green uh, circle. We are going to follow the red circle. So red follow x and red follow y. We are not going to use follow x and follow y, and we are going to rename this style in re reanimated green circle style. So let's pass it right here. So let's reload. And we can see that everything is working perfectly. So the last thing that we want to check is the current position of this uh, blue circle. So um, let's say that uh, we release the finger in this position. So let's say that's, that uh, this blue circle is on the left side of the, of the screen. We need to animate back the circle with the translate x value equal to zero. Otherwise, if this uh, blue circle lies on the right side of the screen, we need to animate back this uh, circle to uh, with the translate x equal to screen width. So we can handle this on release gesture with the onend callback uh, provided by the gesture dot pen. And here we can see uh, we can uh, check the current translate x value. And if this translate x value is greater than screen width, we can update this translate x value equal to screen width. So actually, let me fix it. If translate x value is greater than screen width divided by two, so if this circle lies on the right side of the screen, we need to update this translate x value equal to screen width. Otherwise, let's say translate x value equal to zero. So uh, of course we need to uh, define this uh, screen width and as always we can use this uh, uh, dimension dimensions API from React Native. So let's say here width, screen width and let's see. So uh, nothing is working of course uh, and that's because the initial position if, is the uh, center of the screen. So we need to remove from the container style the align items and justify content property. And let's see. So here we need to fix also this behavior. Basically, we don't want to translate until screen width, uh, screen width, but we want to translate x value. Uh, we want that the translate x value needs to be equal to screen width minus 80. 80 is just the size of the circle. So let's see what's going on and we can see that everything is working uh, smoothly so uh, let me refactor a little bit this 80 let's define here the size equal to 80 size here and let's say size and size divided by two so uh, of course uh, here uh, you might expect uh, uh, to add the width spring animation, but you can see that uh, automatically the animation is working nicely without uh, the width spring animation. And that's because uh, uh, here we don't have, uh, we are not animating this uh, translate x value, but we are, we are passing the follow x parameter and the follow x are, or are already applying the spring animation to the translate x and the translate y value. So that's why um, so that's why this animation is working nicely. So thanks a lot for staying with me all uh, that time. I hope that uh, you like this animation and you like this content. So uh, if you enjoy this kind of video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you have some suggestion for upcoming videos, feel free to leave a comment in the section below.